Hello world, it's Angelot, and let's talk about CrossFilter. So, a lot of y'all probably know CrossFilter is this really fast client-side um, data manipulation library. Um, it's built to work with D3 by Mr. Bostock, and, you know, it's, it's pretty useful and pretty powerful, and I just want to give a quick getting started with it example. Um, we'll just go through setting up a simple data set, adding records to it, filtering, and a little bit of grouping. Um, I've been using CrossFilter a lot late um, the last few weeks, learning a lot about it. I struggled through some through some concepts and things with it, so hopefully, you know, I can share the way I've been understanding it and it will save you some grief. All right, let's go. So, cross filter. I'll go to this page, and the first thing I always do is go to the API reference. Now, to use it in tributary, we have to actually load um, the library into tributary as a foreign um, script. So, we do that in our config external scripts cross filter enter and now we have our xf we have our instance of cross filter now we need a little bit of data to play with um, i am going to use a csv file because it's chances are you may as well i'm going to use the cars data set which i used in the parallel coordinates video and this is sort of an infamous or just ubiquitous example data set in a lot of database material. So we'll just do cars CSV. And you know, this data set has a bunch of records the name of each of these cars, uh, the fuel economy, the number of cylinders, displacement, horsepower, weight, acceleration, and year. Year is a two digit number. So we may want to filter on various things, right? We want to know, like, we just want to get the subset of cars that are, um, you know, low fuel economy or high fuel economy, or you know, know how many cars there are with each type of cylinder from each year. So we need to get the data. Uh, in order to do that, we can say. tributary.cars so the file name of your CSV file gets turned into a variable on tributary and we can see what our data looks like so it's a big array 400 it's not a big if you're using cross filter it's a tiny array but the whole point is to be able to um, get whatever data you have in CSV in there. now the first thing we'll notice though is that several of these things that are numbers are actually strings so we will make a uh, function here, we'll call it two numbers, uh, and we're just going to do like, you know, oh, this is also nasty. So see these like names are really uh, awkward, you can make those a little bit nicer, I think. So if we just call this, uh, let's just call this MPG, cylinders, displacement, let's call that CC, HP, let's use the, the units. Um, call this. All right, let's see what our data looks like now. All right, so it's a little more friendly to deal with. So now we can do something like d.cc equals parse int d.cc. Oops, that's a CSS. So we'll just do this for each of our um, dimensions that are numbers. So we have several. Uh, this is a kind of a common thing you will find having to do um, when you're dealing with 
with CSVs because you know D3 has no way to know which of your columns are numbers, uh, which ones are um, actually supposed to be strings. So you know you just gotta tell it. over our data and call it two numbers. So now we log our data. Great. So we actually have numbers except for the name which should be a string. Good. Alright. And I'm just gonna like leave the console open because we'll probably be doing data mine there. Um, I'm going to put a link the API reference here. So with cross filter, we now need to add our records to the cross filter. So, so when we called this, it created a function xf, which is like a cross filter instance basically. Um, sorry. So we can add an array of records um, to our cross filter here. Then to use cross filter, we need to make dimensions, and then we can actually store um, these dimensions of variables. So let's say we want to take a look at cylinders the most, um, and we'll just do xf.dimension, and you give it a function, and you just return d dot cylinders. So this is telling cross filter like it's going to look through all your records and make this dimension for all the values in the cylinders. Uh, you might want a couple more. Let's get uh, cylinders and we can look at like miles per gallon fuel pump. Right? Um, and let's get one more uh, year. Okay, so now we have some dimensions, so we need to do stuff with We want to do stuff with them. Uh, we can, for instance, well, let's let's look at filtering a little bit, right? So we can do cylinders dot filter, um, and we give it a range. So let's say we just want six cylinder uh, fil um, cars, right? We can actually now look at the top results, let's say the top 10 six cylinder cars. So these all should have six cylinders. And if we want to get all of them, we give it top infinity. There's still 83 cars with six cylinders. Uh, how many cars are with eight cylinders? So let's get that one. 100 cars with eight cylinders. And if we want to give it a range, we can say like six to eight. Uh, I think that might not be inclusive, so we'll say five to nine. That gives us 190. Okay. So we can filter. If we keep filtering on the same dimension, like this filter will replace that one. And then if we do cylinders.filter and null, that just gets rid of all of the filters that happened before. So we don't really need that. Um, but yeah, we have 84 that have six cylinders. Alright, so what else about this? So the other nice thing, right, is that you're filtering basically the cross filter down. So if we do filter all the the ones with six cylinders, who and then let's um, filter the miles per gallon to be between like zero and thirty. So that didn't remove that many, but we can actually like as we bring our miles per gallons down, like most six cylinders are above seventeen miles per gallon. But let's do like. 14 
to 30. So all of them are in the range of 14 to 42. But like all the ones between 14 and 20 miles per gallon, it's like half of them. So we can filter on multiple dimensions. Like if we turn this off, we get a bunch more cars because a bunch of the like 14 or four cylinder cars will be in this range too, or eight cylinder cars. Um, so that's how filtering on multiple dimensions works. Now one more thing that we can do that cross filter gives you that's really nice is grouping. So we can say, like we take the cylinders, um, let's call it, you know, sil group equals cylinders dot group. This gives us a default um, grouping. So we can now get all of the members of this group. And this will give us objects where the key is the, the number of cylinders and the value is the number of records with that value with that number of cylinders. So there's actually some three and five cylinder cars. I didn't know this was um, Most are four cylinder, and there's some six and some eight, right? Now the cool thing about this is that if you um, add one of these filters, like if we do a miles per gallon filter, we get back that like all of the ones between 14 and 17 are 8 and 6 miles per gallon. So we can uh, really utilize this to make nice interactive charts because you can set up these filters to be, you know, brush components, uh, inputs of any kind, and then use the groupings as outputs to um, see what's going on. So let's draw a really quick bar chart using this group, right? So we can do, um, let's see. Select all rects data, and we'll just give it this all here. Marker sign. Uh, and rectangle here. And I'll just do this, you know, quick and dirty. Um, set the uh, width. So let's make it a um, bar chart that goes horizontally and we'll just uh, do the uh, value and we'll, we'll scale it in a second. Okay, 20 picks high, um, x is 100, y. Um, so we'll space them out, let's remove this filter. So yeah, um, it's like the simplest possible bar chart we could do. Let's multiply the value by like three. Um, well, let's let's make a scale real quick. And we can do d uh, or let's do zero d three on max. Um, so. So we can scale this to whatever we want. And if we do this, hmm, maybe we don't do that. We only want to set this to the max. Because now as we filter this is like relative. It's not absolute. So what you might want to do is have this set to the max the first time. Which, uh, you know, is 
let's just use some arbitrary value for now. Comment this out because you want that. Um, you know, there should be like no more than 200 per category. So as we filter, you know, if we get the whole range of miles per gallon, we should have all of the cars here. And each of these is the number in the cylinders. So if we make the range be high miles per gallon we see that the only thing left is, is these let's uh, do the same thing and label the cylinders So as we bring down the high miles per gallon, the four cylinders go away, but the eight cylinders stay there. So there you have it. We can show you know, group by some dimension, show distribution of, of the records, and that the simple bar chart. Uh, hopefully this helps you play around and get get started with um, using cross filter and as I'm messing with it I'm learning more about it too so I'll probably make some more videos going deeper into it. Alright, let's